Let's kick it off right here on this top story, and that is jobs, jobs, jobs. Alabama will reportedly be the site of a new $1.6 billion Toyota and Mazda plant. Another victory for the president, who's been pushing automakers to build new factories in the United States. The plant near Huntsville is expected to employ as many as 4,000 people, produce some 300,000 cars a year. Bob, what do you think about this? Will we see other automakers like Ford, General Motors following suit? How important is this? Well, first of all, this is another big win for Alabama. Not only did they win the national championship <laughs> the go. other night, but uh, they are certainly on a roll, right? Uh, this is a big win for the administration. We were just talking about regulation rollback. We're talking about uh, tax, new tax uh, structure. We're talking about repatriation of funds. Now we're seeing repatriation of jobs. I, I think this is very encouraging. Alabama has been setting the stage, Maria, because they have uh, really brought in a lot of suppliers, which is key for transportation, you know, local uh, just-in-time deliveries. So I think they've really been working on this platform. for. So it's a big win for our country, big win for Alabama. I think you will see more of this job repatriation under this administration. It is a big win, by the way. Just to, It's a big win for Alabama over North Carolina, too, which should be pointed out, that we knew this was coming to the extent that, you know, uh, foreign-based companies have built cars here in the United States for a long time, and we knew that this particular deal would happen. It was just a question of which state it would happen in, and it did happen in Alabama over North Carolina. You know, I think that the, the interview I think I'm looking forward to the most this morning is the Mark Short interview at the bottom of this hour that you're going to do because, you know, it plays into this a little bit, but they... I mean, maybe you missed it when you were traveling yesterday, but that meeting at the White House was fascinating for so many reasons yesterday. And I'm home. wondering... You mean the DACA meeting? Yes, yeah. of course. And then whether there's some Diane sort of... Diane Feinstein? A, yes, that. Uh, and, and everything else. I mean, we just got this inside look at how the president is looking at things. But now, just in terms of now, you have... Is there a shift in the administration in terms of how they're addressing business, in terms of how they're addressing the economy, and are you seeing a moderation uh, from this president? I think all kind of plays into the bigger you picture. You mean because he had the cameras there for an hour? A little bit, but just yeah. the way he approached immigration, and now he's getting hit pretty hard uh, by his base on that, and he was in the, on some of the cable news shows last night. So just is there a shift mm. in the administration's outlook in terms of how they look at um, economies, at politics, and at business? I think that's a big question. No, I was just going to say, and Ann Coulter called it the lowest day of the presidency. However... Uh, this is the president. This is what Donald Trump has been doing all along, and people just ignored it. The, the New York Times tried to make that meeting about his mental fitness, and this was he was trying to prove to the American people that he was mentally stable, and that this was a show. That, that's literally how they couched that meeting yesterday. Wow. And I just think that he's making deals, and that's what he's been doing all along. And the ma the mainstream media outlets have been ignoring it and focusing on everything else but the economy. Hard to not focus on these markets. I mean, look at this market. 75 record highs. Markets capped another 75th record high yesterday. Uh, uh, 75 under President Trump. Uh, it's been a great start to the new year for stocks. Digging now we're talking about $7 trillion in market value gained since Election Day. Right. And, oh. and talking about the, again, front page of the Wall Street Journal today, talking about the 10-year yield closing above 2.5% for the first time since last March. Watch that. I will, I'll point out that every time it, since the financial crisis that the yield has gotten that high, it's been a buying signal for Treasuries mm. that it hasn't stayed there. But that's certainly the biggest concern, not only for bond investors, but stock investors. As will higher yields, higher interest rates be a potential headwind for Almost stocks? seems like it's the only concern because, I mean, even yeah. in that article and others, and you talk to people, is that they're almost searching for reasons that the market might pull back. I mean, I, mean, I guess yeah. maybe they're that's a little bit scary in some ways, but a higher interest rates at some point uh, becomes a problem, I guess, or a concern for stocks. But right now, that, that seems like the only thing out there that people the are... Thing. It the, is, the, right? The, it the is. way that Jamie Dimon answered it yesterday was saying, look, if we have economic growth that is consistent... At going for the next couple of years, the Federal Reserve is going to be inconsequential. Yeah. Which I thought was an interesting comment. It is. And, and he said. He's not worried about the wind down. He's not no. worried about four rate hikes. And he said that, you know, let inflation determine a number of increases the Fed will, will rather than predict something. Let's, let's respond to the market rather than, you know, be pro, proactive or predictive in this area. But